<laughs> Hi, this is Paul Kreutz, and welcome to Halloween How To. In this edition, I'm going to show you how to make scary teeth table decorations for your Halloween table. But before I take you through those steps, please take a few seconds and subscribe to our channel. We will be bringing you more of these Halloween how-to videos. And in addition, we have this great animated web series called Gardner and Wells, and it's a family-friendly, spooky series that I think you would really enjoy, and it's just perfect for the Halloween season. Okay, let's get started. We're using plaster casts from Dental Impressions. You might have some around the house or contact your dentist or a dental lab for unclaimed plaster casts. We're actually working with two sets. One is actually a upper and lower. The other set is two uppers and uh, we'll show you how we're going to do that. Now this upper came with a plaster foot that's put on by the lab in order for them to work on it. That needs to be removed. The best way to cut through the plaster is by using a a small hand saw such as a dovetail saw which is what this is a coping saw and keep a utility knife close at hand you want to cut right where the two plasters come together take a pencil and give yourself a guideline and that way when you're cutting through the plaster you have a good guide to follow now this casting came really damaged from the lab and there's any number of patching materials that you could use anywhere from a wood patch to a lightweight spackle so carefully fill in the damaged area then lightly sand so here's that excess plaster that needs to be removed and the best way to remove that is with a small hand saw coping saw i think is the best and you want to follow along the natural gum line and uh, restore that gum line not only in the front but also it needs to be done along the side as well. So here we have the excess plaster has been removed and uh, it's been reshaped. It's been rounded off. I used both a coarse sandpaper and then working to a fine sandpaper. Now here is a time too where you can change the look of the teeth. Here I changed the profile of the gum where the tooth meets the gum. I increased that size. You can also put spacing in between the teeth. You can use your coping saw or your sandpaper to do that. And you can also create broken teeth or chipped teeth. Now here's the other set and I used a piece of cardboard as a spacer because I needed some more space at the back and then I used the rubber bands to tie this all together so I can work on them. Now how are we going to create the hinge that goes along the back of this? Well the first thing we want to do is get a really clean straight cut along the back and this is achieved by using a block sander which is take your coarse sandpaper on a nice flat piece of wood and you can sand it that way. You can use a palm sander or even a belt sander. Now, as you can see, we don't have a lot of surface area, especially on this, um, the lowers of this particular one. So we wanna increase that surface area by using some craft stick or wood. Now this happens to be a paint stir stick. We want two pieces, one for the top, one for the bottom. You wanna trace and then cut two pieces of wood to fit for the top and the bottom. Next step is gluing those pieces of wood to the plaster and we're using a quick set epoxy. You want to make sure that the surface is really clean. Remove all that dust you've created by sanding and these are the four areas that you want to place your epoxy. Put the pieces of wood in place and then secure that with rubber bands. This particular epoxy sets up in five minutes. Now just a note it still might be a little bit soft so keep that in mind but you should be able to go ahead and take the rubber bands off and uh, then you can can check out how everything fits and then we'll be ready for the final step of creating the hinge for the set of teeth. I'm using this construction tape. Now this is kind of a super tape. There's a couple different types of brands out there and the reason why they call it that is because it is really sticky. So you want to make sure that you uh, have everything lined up and you're going to put two pieces of tape on and then you're going to trim it off with your utility knife or an exacto blade. So here is the other set and we have two layers of that construction tape and we want to make sure that that is really adhered to those two pieces of wood. The best way to do that is to take a stick, even the little craft stick, and we're going to rub across the back of that. And that does two things. One, it makes sure that you're really pressing that into the wood. It also generates a little bit of heat that helps that to activate the adhesive. And then we want to trim off the excess. So here you have the finished product. We've got the hinge all 
done. We've got it trimmed off. And I wanted to point out at this point one of the ways that I created some of these little divots in the gum area. And I did that by taking my rough sandpaper and wrapping it around a dowel. You could also use a wooden pencil. Now here's the set of teeth all primed and ready to paint. I gave it two coats of a spray paint primer sealer. Also used a flat. I always find that if you're going to prime anything, prime it with a flat paint. Your finished paint will adhere a lot better. Now you can use either a latex paint or an acrylic paint. Both of them are water-based. I'm using a satin latex paint and I like to go ahead and paint that area where the gum and the teeth come together first and I also overpaint a little bit. And let me explain what that is. When you're getting into that area, the groove there where the gum and the tooth meets and the gum area between teeth, you're going to get paint onto the teeth. So I purposely overpaint then when I use the white paint for the teeth, and I'm using a flat white acrylic for the teeth, I then underpaint, which means that I hold back a little bit with the white paint. You have a lot more control that way, and you get a much crisper line of demarcation between the teeth and the gum. Now, if you wanted to stop at this point, you certainly can, because these look great just as they are. But I'm going to take it a step further, and I'm going to go ahead and stain the teeth, and then I'm going to give some detail to the gum tissue area. So to create the stain for the teeth, you want a dark brown. I actually use this orange color and some charcoal acrylic paint and then I watered it down. And you want the ratio for this to be about two-thirds paint to one-third water. The other thing you want to use is you want to use two types of brushes, a fine brush to apply the stain, and then you're going to want to have a, a soft dry brush to then manipulate that stain and I'm using an old brush that I have here it's got an irregular surface and I like that because I want the stain to look irregular I don't want it too perfect so you're going to take your fine brush and you're going to load it with paint and then you're going to load the paint also into the grooves where the teeth and the gum come together I'm going to start doing four at a time <music> So four teeth done, you just repeat the process until all the teeth are done, both inside and out, and it ends up looking like this. So your teeth are now stained. Next, we want to age the teeth. And what I use is a watered down yellow. So I take yellow acrylic, I actually add a little bit of that brown to it, and the ratio of paint to water to thin it down is about half. So half paint, half water. <laughs> So the teeth are stained and aged, and the next step is to add some detail to the gum tissue. And I used three colors. You've got your base color, and then you want to go slightly lighter, slightly darker. What you want to do then is for the dark areas, and this is the area that I created those depressions with with the sandpaper, you want to use a dry brush and brush on a couple different coats of that, almost like airbrushing. And then for the highlight, you want to use that lighter color, use your fine tip brush and you want to paint those high areas and also around the gum right where the gum and the teeth meet maybe some other little details some dots then finish it all off by adding some self-adhesive felt to the underside just trace cut place and these scary teeth are ready for the party
Thank <laughs> you.